Welcome back to the shop. Thanks for bearing with me in my horrible YouTube skills. This is Bacon Von Baconstein. And what we're going to do here today is we're going to make some pins for our knives. Now what people do is they take their knife blank and they drill a couple holes so they can attach their scales. Scales made out of wood, micarta, whatnot. So if you look right here, we have a nice piece of walnut. We're going to be doing some scales with this. We also have a little bit of cherry. Uh, I would suggest buying these in larger pieces than going on to places like Amazon and buying the little teeny tiny scales that people sell. Uh, for instance, this right here was given to me. This is an offcut of walnut that the guy couldn't use. Look at that beautiful grain right there. Uh, the guy makes furniture, does all sorts of uh, carpentry, carpentry product, uh, stuff on the side, kind of like I do a little bit of knife stuff on the side, and uh, he can't use this. Me? I can make 10 or 12 knife handles out of this little piece of scrap that he couldn't do anything with. Same thing with this cherry. I can figure something out with this cherry. Probably have to cut it a little bit less than down the middle and then slice it up like this to make some some knife scales but as you can see this weekend we were a little bit busy we have uh, one of my knives I call the Centaur cut out nice and ergonomic handle beautiful I like putting a thumb thumb groove up here it makes it so that way you you want to choke up on it and really be able to get into whatever it is that you're doing did the same thing with uh, Another little knife that I call the Bushmaster. And then this right here is a knife that I'm making for the wife. I call this a ladybug. This knife is perfect for somebody with a smaller hand, like a, a shorter woman or a child. Anywho, so what we're going to do is we're going to actually make some pins. We're going to make one pin to attach the handles with. Now what a lot of people do is they'll buy solid brass pins or they'll buy mosaic pins. Mosaic pins are hollow uh, brass or copper tube that has other little bits of brass and copper put inside along with resin to make little little designs. But you go online and you buy a, a two or three inch section for 30 or 40 bucks. The shit's not cheap. It adds up. Also, I want to do something a little bit different than everybody else. So what I'm, I've done is I've gone on Amazon. I bought this stuff right here. Easy Cast. These two bottles of Easy Cast, the uh, resin and the hardener, were about 13 bucks. Amazon. Easy day. Plus, the cool thing about Amazon, you go on Amazon, you can, you can look at what people have already done, look at their reviews. Some people even put up pictures. I'm not that fancy. So... What I've done is I've taken equal parts of each in old CVS pharmacy syringes and I'm going to mix them in this. Now, this cost me all of zero dollars aside from what I paid to go to Five Guys. This is a ketchup container. And I don't know if you noticed, but they don't, they don't really keep track of these too well. So if you steal about 30 of them, nobody's the wiser. Well, you're not really stealing them. You, you bought the food. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take equal parts, mix it in here. But I'm also going to add this glow-in-the-dark powder. You can also get on Amazon. Glow-in-the-dark powder. Here you go. Ultra green, VG10, dark paint, half ounce, whatever. This stuff is cool. It will glow in the dark if you charge it with ultraviolet light. So anyhow... The thought process behind this is I will fill the center of this tube with glow-in-the-dark resin. It will harden. I will make pins and put them in knives. And it will add a, a special touch that nobody else does. So if you want to add a special touch to your knives that seemingly nobody else does except for me who showed this to you, I would suggest getting some of this glow-in-the-dark powder. Now I can throw these away because they're CVS and I don't care about them. Get some of this glow-in-the-dark powder, or in this case, a paste. That's cool, too. All the other stuff I got was powder. Get you some. 
Throw that up in there. How much? How much do you want it to glow? I want it to glow a lot. Well, let's put a lot in. What are you doing? I'm mixing the fuck out of it. So the epoxy is a clear epoxy. Oh fuck, this shit's already starting to gum up. Look at that. It's already too much for me to do anything with. This is fucked. Well, I might be able to do something with it. No, this is pretty much fucked. Well, shit. Alright. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to get this other shit. And I know for a fact is in a powder because I can see it is in a powder beforehand. That's some bullshit. And we're not going to do a one-to-one -one with resin and hardener. We're going to do fucking this much resin, this much resin. Bunch less hardener because obviously that fucked us. Ultra green powder. Next time I will make sure it is a powder. How much do I want it to glow? I want it to glow all of it. That's some bullshit. I'm keeping my mistakes so that way you guys can see what I fuck up so you can check to make sure ahead of time that your shit's good. But also because my editing skills are bullshit. So what I've done is I've taken tape, put it at the bottom of this. You can get this online as well. I'm trying to hurry up. Fill up the damn tube. Boom. You can tell this is going to be some nasty shit if I'm wearing fucking gloves. Grab one in, shove it in. Squeeze it till it comes out the other side. Coming out the other side already. Shit. Man, I knew this was going to be messy. I didn't know it was going to be this fucking messy. Anyhow. We're going to want to let that sit, dry, do whatever the hell it's going to do. Let it chooch out. And that's about it. I'm just going to fill this up. And that's it. That's all there is to it. And this is baking out from the shop. 